Hello everyone and welcome back to Back Cod Banter. I am your host Tucker Hazel and this is Backlog Banter's retrospective series of the Call of Duty franchise. I am of course joined by my Back Cod Banter co-host Sergeant Dan. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Salute, salute. And of course returning from the ga grave, Andrew Rosco of My Star Wars Show fame. He's here. He was here in episode one. He died for two months and now he's back to talk about the legendary game. Call of Duty 4, Modern Warfare, of course. A little prop comedy. I've got my actual PlayStation 3 disc here. So, uh, boys, this game is is iconic. It is special. And I know it means a lot to both of you. So I'm going to be leaning a lot on your nostalgia, your experiences, and very excited to talk about this game. Where do you want to start with this? Ooh, that's a good question. I, I like that you are starting off calling it legendary because that, that warms my heart. Cause well, this I'm calling is... it legendary because... I. It is. And, and frankly, going into this series, me playing through 1, 2, and 3, I'm like, I can see where Call of Duty is going. Like, I can I can see why this is an important one, revolutioning, revolutionizing aim down sights, 2 and 3 being a little bit bigger deal, launching with consoles. But this game is is a different beast. Yeah, and absolutely. it is insane, the jump from that first trilogy to this one. Yes, uh, we were. We, I think we talked about. I think in two and three, it just kept upping the cinematic quality. Yeah, and this just by, one just by a touch each time. Yeah, I think three showed the biggest jump, but then yeah. like this one, it's like, well, they're playing a different game at this point. It's completely different. It is full on cinematic. You have awesome cutscenes. Captain Price is actually a character. He's not just a dude, pretty much. Yeah, I love Captain Price. Love Captain Price. Uh. What, what, what would you say your favorite aspect of this game is, Andrew? Um, I mean, it's the only aspect you probably didn't touch, which is the multiplayer. The multiplayer okay, sure, is sure. absolutely amazing. Uh, I, I really just love the scripted set pieces. I love the whenever the like, I think for me, it would either, it would have to be either all gillied up or the AC 130 mission. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are the two favorites. I do think that that is where this game steps up the most from the from the other games is in terms of having very varied um, locations that you're going to and making sure that each mission is different in some way. There's mm -hmm. there's n almost no two missions take place in the same location. I think there might be one location that that's reused once, yeah. um, but. Other than that, each one stands out both from a mechanical or gameplay perspective or a, a visual perspective, a layout perspective. There's always something going for it. And, of course, they just throw you right into that with long cutscenes, actual story development, and then um, and then the first mission, which I believe is crew, crew expendable, where you're on a big sinking ship and, and you're you're storming through the crates and all this. It's like That's so different from what the first three games offered you. A little, a little trivia, Tucker. Let me throw a little trivia your way. That that uh, crew expendable. The original way it was supposed to end is when you open the con shipping container, you find the manifest. The level is supposed to just end right there. Mm -hmm. I remember I read an article in a Eurogamer like oof, years ago. Uh, one of the animators over the weekend took the took like his files home, and he at, he's like, you know what? Like this level needs a little more oomph. So he mm -hmm. added that whole sequence where you're running out with the waters pouring in With the, and the explosion wow. and the. The on your feet soldier turning are, yeah the ship turning all that uh, which way which way go right like he added that over the weekend and presented it to the bosses and they're like you know what this is a much better ending sequence so they, they added that later on in uh later in production yeah absolutely uh what, what would you say is the most standout moment for you daniel uh, in Daniel, terms of the, me, it, my, my bad. Uh, daniel's <laughs> dead i i put an end to him okay oh, I put shit. An end to him. um <laughs> This is war. This, this, is, is, this war. is the call. This is modern warfare. <laughs> Kill the old personality. I did. Uh, if you're talking about the campaign, I think yeah. all gillied up. I think is easily the best mission. I do think that the the, the mission um, uh, on the on the shipping container is yeah. also very good. Um, but I think all gillied up is just easily the best mission. I love stealthing. I love the sequence of you and um, Macmillan just crawling, uh, like under the tanks and yeah, like uh, right next to people. Yeah. Just so much stress. I love it. Yeah. I think that that is one of the most, I, I think obviously I've done a little research about this game. I was not f particularly familiar with it at all. I didn't, I hadn't even heard of all gillied up before. Um, but I, d through my research, I, I, what I've heard is that this is one of the most iconic call of duty missions. It's part of the reason this game is to the iconic status that it is. And what it does is just 
an atmosphere and tension and pacing that basically no missions from the the first three games can match with with can touch with a 40 foot long stick um and especially because it's just so varied and you can tackle it in multiple different ways if you want in terms of uh mcmillan giving you the option to go in and and kill people or dodge around them i think that's really cool for in terms of variety Mm -hmm. um so the all gillied up level was actually the one that they demoed at e3 that same year when the game came out sure and that was the, seeing that i remember that was e3 2007 watching it at home and seeing like these two guys well you only see the i guess you see mcmillan in the ghillie suit and just stealthing it and like it back then that was so photorealistic where they had like the hdr the lighting and the shadows and all that stuff like it was like mind-blowing for a 16 year old me so i remember watching that i'm like oh i want to get this game so i'm glad i think they played it to their strengths for all gillied up is the perfect like snapshot for like if we're trying to grab your interest like this is the mission we're going to present you and this is the one that's going to grab your interest to actually want to play the game later yeah i think for me the missions that stand out the most are are the one where you doing the heat seeking thing from above i what do you know the name that's of that the mission? ac-130 mission ac-130 yeah. does it have a specific uh, it has a specific above, name is it death, from above? death from above or something okay, like that so yeah. death from above is the one that really i mean i was enjoying this game immensely up until that point but death from above i think gives a a totally different shift to the game in terms of it's not it's not a first person shooter at that point you're you're surveying from above the camera is is um piloting around and you are just switching through your weapons and and taking down things with a little more accuracy and i think that really showed me what this game does in terms of its variety and creativity that the other games certainly didn't but this specific mission sticks out to me because there's nothing else like it in the game and there's mm -hmm. certainly nothing else like it as far as I've, I've played so far in the series so i was like wow this is really something special what I I love about that mission, just to jump in real quick, yeah, is course. how you're just listening to the banter between the pilot and the gunner. Yeah. And they're just so like desensitized to like that. It's so sanitized the action going on the ground where they're just like, oh, like, you know, oh, like that's 11 KIA is confirmed or like it, to them, like, I mean, we don't have to get into this, but it's kind of goes into like the stuff going on in real life or like air, like drone pilots and stuff. Like they're just so far removed from the battlefield that like, it almost kind of gives you another like point of view of how like warfare is conducted like today. They're just kind of just like, like they're just blips. Like, oh, just don't target the flashing strobes. That's our guys. Yeah. And like, oh yeah, just target, like let them loose. Like, oh, don't damage the church. Just, you know, just let loose. And it's just like, it's just the first time I played that back when it first came out, I remember playing that. And it just felt so like, like war through the lens of like a camera and stuff. Just so it was like clean and sanitized. And it's just, it's, I don't know. It's one of those things that just stuck with me for so long. I think what helps with that is um, it not having a realistic look and it yeah. being the night vision. Yeah, so the if they don't, they, or the black, yeah, very black and white. They don't look like thermal. people, right? Or the thermal. Yeah. They don't look like people. So it's, you are just desensitized. You're just, just shooting these just blips that, yeah, they, they're people who knows. I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. I, I do think that um, what, what Andrew was talking about before, and I, as I want to transition into the way that this game is a step up in terms of, visual quality environment quality all of that i mean this game i i i played it on the ps3 i played it on the original hardware the original disc no cleanup no remaster nothing like that because i just when i'm playing these games i want to see how they progress on original hardware and i was i was really impressed because i remember playing call of duty 3 and, I, and actually i just rewatched all three of our other reviews to refresh myself on what i thought of the other games um but with call of duty 3 it being on ps3 and uh, Treyarch not really knowing how to do the hardware, and there was a lot of uh, clipping on little bits in the environment, and there was some slowdown at some points. This game is, even on original hardware, is pretty much technically flawless. I had a few frame rate stutters when, when a big explosion would go off, but how impressive this game is on, on a technical level from variety, environment detail, all of that is is pretty bonkers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, I was just, I was just gonna say that probably comes from being so a little so much further into the generation. I think it's yeah. what two, a year, year, two years About into two. the uh, into like the three hundred and sixty PS three generation. So it comes they're, out they're, one year after uh, um, Call of Duty three, right? Two thousand six, two thousand seven. Um, yeah. So yeah, they 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 know how to use this technology much more, and this shows this really shows the um, advantages that the PS three and the three hundred and sixty have. Because I agree, <laughs> like go and play those old ones. Uh, much rougher than um than even in 2007 with that game because it still looks good yeah i looked up the specs and actually on 360 and on ps3 it's uh, it runs at 600p and it's at 60 frames per second so the game is smooth like butter yeah and i'm assuming both of you played the remastered version 
Yeah, that's the yeah. easiest one to get. Of course, it's the most accessible for me. Yeah, yeah, um, and, and I think it also comes from the fact that Infinity Ward had a lot more experience. They were now this is their third game in the series. They did one and two, um, and they were given two whole years to work on this game and just yeah. really polish it up. Um, and, and I think that's that's probably where the technical aspect of it comes from because not that Treyarch was bad at what they did, but they'd never done something to this scale before at, with Call of Duty Three. Um, and so shifting back into Infinity Ward's hands, it's like all right, these guys know what they're doing and they're very passionate about it you can like feel the creativity and the excitement through how how much this game tries to do in terms of its ambition absolutely um let's see what else oh some other things i want to talk about is how this game uh, blew me away um in terms of on a mechanical level how just basically identical to modern first person shooters this game is i mean you're playing one and you, you have to deal with the health packs, and you're like, oh, okay, it's a little weird. With two, you're like, oh, the checkpointing, the enemy AI is a little funky. At three, you know, you, you've got a, a couple weird things. But in this, they introduce the sprint, much easier melee, melee kill, uh, a really u incredibly useful auto-aim. Um, and just all of that just made me feel like, man, I'm playing I'm playing a game from three years ago, and I, I wouldn't even be able to tell, except for it doesn't, it doesn't look quite as good, obviously. But but uh, from a mechanical level, I was I was very impressed. By how this game basically matches what what's releasing today. Yeah, I, the, the, I was. Just, I'm sorry. The, the, this is where the foundation really is. Is yeah. four uh, like they built everything they did from one, two, and three, and four is where everything just feels like four from now on, pretty much. Go yeah. ahead, Andrew. I, I remember. I remember when this when the game came out. I was uh, I was working at a video rental store, and I remember. Rider, I think I don't know if it launched in the same month as Halo 3. Or, I know it was no, it was a month after Halo a 3. Month was after. Okay, September, right. I think. Okay, that makes sense because I remember people at the time like Halo 3 was like the big buzz, right? Everyone was concerned was playing Halo 3, and I remember just a trickle, like a slow trickle of people, like, oh, like customers would come up to me because because we also rented games out. And they'd be like, oh, do you have Call of Duty 4? And we're like, no, nah, we don't have Call of Duty 4. And then like more and more people, do you have Call of Duty 4? And so then I started hearing from other people like, oh, yeah, like the multiplayer is amazing. And like the campaign is like so realistic. And like, and I just remember like, it was one of those moments where like, oh, like this is something special right here. Because when I I looked up some more information about it and like Call of Duty 4, like it it sold less than, than Halo did on the, Halo 3 did on the Xbox 360. But by January of the next year, like it already out outpaced Halo 3. I mean, it, it was helps Christmas. that it was also on PC and PS3, obviously. It's not yeah, just on one system. But, mm -hmm. but I think it, it was it that just, Christmas time. Really, yeah, it just blew game. by, and I remember like almost overnight, everybody was like, like, oh, what's your PSN ID so I can play Call of Duty with you? Like that was like, like I knew multiplayer games were a thing back then, but this was the multiplayer game for like a couple of, I mean, for that whole year right there. Yeah, um, for me, I I didn't get it until Christmas. I you know I'm I'm a Halo guy, so I was Halo all 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 the way, and mm -hmm. I started getting hints of it because I've played other Call of Duties up up until that point, but never really like beat a Call of Duty. I think like Big Red One was like the first one I really played, and I got it at Christmas time, and I was like, this is something else. And then I just pretty much that i kind of like was bounced back between halo 3 and uh call of duty 4 but it was mostly call of duty 4 at that point and it just kick-started really my call of duty multiplayer days and that road until ps3 ps4 xbox one generation are there any uh, specific multiplayer memories you you two have with this because i'm just interested to hear some stories as we get into these games you guys have a lot of memories with this is a game I've never played until like five days ago when I started it, and of course beat it in in a pretty five days ago. Yeah, I I, I wait until <laughs> uh, I I have to start playing it in order to. But also, this is a very short game, and I do think that's not not something I criticize the game for because I do think that there's a huge variety of missions. It, it is very well paced, um, mm -hmm. but it is short. Like that's just that's just categorically true. I think it, it I think it actually might be shorter than all the other ones that we've played. Um, in terms of amount of time that it took me to actually roll credits on the campaign. Um, and I have no access to the multiplayer on the PS3 because guess what? PS3 servers no longer exist. I cannot play this game with multiplayer uh, on my PS3. Um, but any specific mu uh, multiplayer memories you guys have? So many. You want you want to go first, Andrew? Go ahead. Sure. Um, I mean. Like I said, this was the game where me, this became the multiplayer game for me. I mean, and it also helped that on PS3, you didn't have to pay for online. So it's, I had the PS3 version. And I remember we didn't have Wi Fi in my home. And my router was like downstairs in my room, what my bedroom was on the second floor. 
So when like people were telling me like, you got to play like the multiplayer. Cause I just bought it for the campaign initially. Yeah. And I was like, all right. So I actually ran, ran a 20 foot ethernet cord from the downstairs office through the window outside to my wow. room. Nice. And that's how, I, that's how I played it for a couple of months until we actually got a Wi-Fi router and my PS3 fortunately was the Wi-Fi version. So that was pretty uh, easy to set up. But yeah, I remember like getting just hooked into this game and that's kind of, I think Call of Duty 4 is the game that got me interested in first person shooters as in general cuz the last time I played one before that was GoldenEye on N64. Wow, yeah. So I was not a multiplayer person, but I That's remember, like a decade. <laughs> I remember like several nights where I would just stay up late where I didn't have school the next day or over the weekend and like with my cousins cuz I some of them had PS3s and like, this was the game that like we bonded over. So like we would still make references to, like, like within the last year we made references. We're like, I don't know for Daniel, but like when you hear the 50,000 people used to live here, now it's a ghost town. Like yeah. that conjures up like specific emotions and memories for me. When I hear that opening line every single time and just like, you know, uh, planting claim. Well, that's more of a multiplayer thing, but oh yeah. Well, yeah, yeah we're talking about multiplayer. And, like I remember times sometimes where like things would just line up perfectly where i would just like snipe someone and i get like two kills at the same time because they just happen to like overlap and those were like whoa big moments um i didn't realize because i had never played i didn't really play much other multiplayers that the time to kill in call of duty is incredibly fast uh, compared to other multiplayer games at the time so like I mean, it's kind of has like the history of being like a Twitch shooter, but like for me, that's like the base. That's like the default is like, yeah, you have it. It's very quick. Whoever sees each other first, like that's a person that usually gets the kill usually. Yeah. So uh, getting quick kills, binging over the weekend, playing with my cousins and just like those memories of just putting hours and hours and hours into the multiplayer. Like it's nothing for me would ever, will ever like surpass that, I think. Yeah, for me, um, uh, I think the initial hook for me was its progression system, and it was and they and it, it's it's like kind of multifaceted too. You have the standard like, oh, I'm leveling up to it was 55, I think for yes. um, Call of Duty Four. They kind of changed that between games, but um, 55 was Call of Duty Four, so you unlock weapons and perks as you go. So you want to get to that max level at 55, um, but then they had they introduced a prestige system as well which would restart your system. You'd get another custom class slot and then you'd have to go back up to 55 again. And then that grind was just very addictive. I wanted to get the max prestige. I think when, within that year, um, I definitely got max prestige, which was 10 in that game. I think for maybe the first, like, I don't know, four or five Call of Duties after this, I was going max prestige every time. Mm -hmm. um, I think I put about... Oof, maybe 35 days worth wow. of playtime in the multiplayer between call of duty four call of duty oh. four till world of war oh About sure wow wow yeah. yeah it was somewhere around there I, I don't really have too much access to that exact time but it yeah, was somewhere in 30 plus days worth of time <laughs> that Daniel, was just Daniel, multiple did you yes. and your group like uh, people who played like did you guys do the thing back then where like their kdr was like the only stat that 100 percent. 100 that was the only you're stat playing call of duty if you don't have at least you. a 2.0, you're you're done. <laughs> you got. I was like, if it was, it was above one, if you managed to get like at least to one, like you're considered like good, decent, or good. And it's like if it was below one, you're like you're like you're trash. You're trash. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. In um, I guess in other multiplayer shooters that have a longer time to kill, I would agree. Like a 1.0 is fine. In, in Call of Duty, it's so quick. I'd say two is pretty pretty average. It's but impressive. um, yeah um what, what was i saying we've got a pro gamer over here of course everyone <laughs> <laughs> are you talking about me <laughs> uh, well apparently <laughs> um but yeah um i have a lot of memories i did a lot of tournament style stuff i don't know if uh, andrew has even heard of game battles the, their website i haven't heard um, of game battle Ooh, that, i feel like obi-wan like that's a name i haven't heard in a long time <laughs> game battles, yeah. i was like E, like early esports that was yes. like you would go to the website you would actually wager real life money um against... we, not all the time like we we oh. the, the leagues that we were in were not um and i'm oh, okay. pretty sure that game battles end up being like a subsidiary of mlg um yeah, so they eventually. like i think they had some sort of interconnectivity there but i would i had multiple teams and you know i was on some really good teams back in the day between not just this Call of Duty, but other ones. Um, I, I was never that good for that. <laughs> uh, but I, see, I didn't even really play regular multiplayer. We played hardcore, and Tucker Hardcore basically is so the time to kill is already so quick. But yeah. hardcore, you have no 
basically shields. Mm -hmm. It's basically one bullet, you're dead. Yeah. That's it. No, um, like no HUD either, too. I yeah, think. no HUD. You got nothing. You, if you're one shot, you're pretty much dead with any weapon. Um, friendly and fire. The, the, friendly fire, of course. The big game mode I played was Search and Destroy, my favorite game mode, which is there's an attacking team, defending team. There's two bomb sites. The attacking team has to plant a bomb at one of the sites, blow it up. Um, but you only have one life uh, per round. And yeah. I think it, at that time, I think it was first to four. So rounds. it's Counter Strike. Basically a Counter Strike yeah. light. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, with like a the similar round system and stuff. Um, but that's and really you get, what we You get play. to choose your loadout beforehand, though. And you get to choose your yeah. loadout, right? Like Counter Strike. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, Counter Strike, you build, you build to it. It's a little yeah, yeah. different. Oh, I, I guess I, my bad, my bad. I'm just trying. I'm just trying to make a funny reference because, frankly, yeah, yeah. The, hearing these stories, hearing this stuff, this is all before my time. But also, mm -hmm. I was not. A, I'm not a big multiplayer gamer in general. I mean, uh, playing some uh, some some CS:GO with my friends, of course, playing a lot of Minecraft online, getting to something like Overwatch, which I played a lot of. Um, but hearing all these stories makes me realize how what, what a legacy this game has in terms of how much content and variety and history there is specifically for Modern Warfare's multiplayer, um, which has entirely passed me by. I can't I can't say anything personally to this because I just played the campaign for the first time. So um, getting back a little bit to the campaign, um, to talk about one of the things that I think, again, also puts this game very clearly above the rest of them. I don't think... When we get to the ranking section of this episode, I don't think, I don't think it's going to be particularly complicated. Um, but is is the way that the story and the characters are are such a step up. Um, and I do think that the main thing that uh, that helps that is having a fictionalized story. Um, Call of Duty 1, 2, and 3 are all shoehorned into recreating um, World War II battles, World War II stories. You have to fit into this narrative. You can't create a crazy character that wasn't really there because that's not historically accurate, and they're trying to get historical accuracy, which, of course, there's an appeal to. But the way that they create a, a realistic but fictionalized uh, story of modern warfare, I think, allows them to be a lot more a lot more creative and ambitious in, in the uh, story points that they try to have. Yeah, I read up on the... Cause I, 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 did, I did a little research every now and then, so oh, I did oh. read up. Oh, well, not research, my homework, I should say. And so I read up on it, how when they approached the story for this, like they wanted to completely avoid any like actual real life, like wars and stuff. Yeah. So like, so like, for example, the Middle East country that has like the coup, like at the beginning of the game, like has no name. And if yeah. you look at it, like, cause you know how like between the, in between missions, like you get the loading screen and like the camera and the map is zooming around and stuff. And like, it zooms in on the Arabian Peninsula, but like the actual part where it zooms in, like is actually just pure desert in real life. There's like mm -hmm. nothing really there. So like, yeah, they avoid using any names of any major places. I mean, they use Russia and they, the all gillied up is in Ukraine, right? Chernobyl yeah. and stuff and all that. But like for the most part, the conflicts, like you're not facing against traditional Russians, you're facing against the you know, ultra nationalists, yes, right? Exactly. They're, not, they're not like the proper Russian army. In fact, the proper Russian army actually assists you a couple Kamarov and like his crew. Yeah, yeah. And so they try to be very careful to sidestep any real global, like real life global tension stuff. Yeah, and they take they take things that were kind of happening in America, American um, war and stuff at the time, and mm -hmm. you know, infuse it in their own new way, which is which is which makes sense we, we 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 can get away from world war ii for a little bit and yeah we do for one game. for one game yeah exactly <laughs> god uh, but i don't want to i don't want to preemptively shit on world at war we haven't we haven't it's one of my favorites yet. Don't um, but uh what the one thing i do say about the what the fact that this is fictionalized is that the set piece moment in terms of cutscenes um really engaged uh, changed my engagement with the story of this game now I'm not someone who's particularly in tune with just military stories in general. So people talking about the politics behind it and, and you know, you got to find this guy because his dad is, is the is the assistant of the, the leader of this party. Like, that stuff goes in one ear, not the other. But when you're playing the mission as as Paul Jackson, who is just another nameless, you know, boring protagonist. Sergeant um, Paul Jackson. Um, and, the, and the bomb goes off and he dies. That's... That's a twist. That's a shocking moment. That's a memorable moment in a yeah. game that can't happen if you're if you're shoehorned into real life because that that didn't happen. That's not a real thing that happened. Um, and so I, I really like how they're able to take liberties like that. Yeah, what a standout moment with the nuke. Mm -hmm. What an awesome like I we talked about our favorite missions and I really didn't bring that up, but like that was a standout moment. Yeah. Um, you know, just crawling as Jackson, uh, just as the radiation is just, you know, flowing over him and he's just, you know, you die as him. And it's, it's just, it's very moving. Yeah. And it also, Oh, sorry. You can finish. Yeah. I was gonna say that. I remember the first time I played that, like I know exactly where I was when I played that mission 
back in 2007. And I remember like, oh, like, surely I'm going to survive this. I'm going to find a way out. And you're just, and like your screen gets to get fuzzy. And then you can see like, there's some stragglers around you who are just succumbing to the radiation. They're like coughing and like struggling to breathe and just collapsing. And you're like, oh, oh this like, is it. Oh, no. Yeah. I'm not going to get out of this alive. And I was like, and then it just like zooms out and it just ends. It just says like KIA or something like that. I'm like, exactly. Oh, like they killed me. Well, like, yeah, and especially the way that it, it um, le- uh, feeds into the larger narrative of the futility of the way that modern warfare, uh, not the game as a concept is structured and just showing uh, Paul Jackson's name in a list of thousands. And it, 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 it highlights it for a second and then it goes off and it's like, boom, well, all these people died in this explosion. And I, I don't think it's, um, relegated to only the the Marine Corps people who died, but also civilians who die and, and people on the other side and stuff. It's like, wow, this is a really like serious moment, and, and it's treated with with reverence. That I think is good, and it also comes after um, a couple of very memorable missions where you're on the helicopter and you're in your um, taking out the tanks and the cars for other people to move in, and then you have you have a like. 90 second time limit or whatever to uh run and save the pilot out of the crash thing and and hop in your helicopter and so that that whole sequence is just memorable and having it culminate in that is like wow okay they they know what they're doing here and, and it feels very purposeful yeah you know what it felt like to me is uh black hawk down <laughs> definitely sure. some black that hawk is a down. direct uh inspiration I, I was doing a little bit of is it okay cool and I, and I believe they were intentionally doing that yeah good good because i definitely i definitely felt that Right um, now, Tuck, Tucker mentioned the when you're taking out the tanks and stuff like on the highway. I remember when I first played that, I was like, I had no idea what a javelin missile was. So when you pull out that thing and it's like you target, it, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm just gonna shoot at it. And it goes, pops out, goes straight up straight in up, the yeah. sky, and then comes straight down above. I'm like, I'm like that is the coolest thing ever. <laughs> yeah, and, and and there are quite a few moments where you know, there's a few moments where you use that. There's a few moments where you're given an RPG to take out some tanks. So you've mm-hmm. you've got a sniper rifle. Of, of course, one shot, one kill, which is uh, interesting. That's kind of a one-off thing. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if that feeds into future missions. But um, I do think that the weapon variety here is also something that is a huge step up. I mean, there's there's a good amount of weapons in the in the first three games, but they're the they're the same weapons in the first three games. Of course, in three you get a mortar, a shitty mortar, a terrible mortar. But they they try to have a little bit of weapon variety. But there's a lot of interesting um, weapons to use here, and, and it certainly makes it feel like. Okay, uh, I want to approach this from this angle. I'll go over. I'll grab. I'll grab a sniper. I'll grab my pistol. I'll grab a thing. Like you can, there's uh, weapons scattered around the environment in in strategic places that are like, okay, yeah, give yourself a, a little bit of a refresh on your arsenal and take this on. Take us on from a different angle. It's kind of fun. Yeah, it doesn't do it as good as like a Halo would in terms mm-hmm. of it's like bouncing around and trying different weapons and stuff. Yeah. But they, they definitely try to encourage you, oh, try the weapon that the enemy was using or, you know, shoot him, kill him and see what this AK uh, feels like or whatever. Um, Halo definitely does a better job at, you know, wanting you and encouraging you to try different weapons. But um, it always, it's always fun to, to shoot all these different Call of Duty weapons because they feel so good. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I remember... Uh uh this was the this was the game that kind of made me like interested in firearms like i don't actually own any real firearms but for a long time for a long time when i was younger i was really into airsoft and i think Mm -hmm. daniel mentioned it in the beginning like i i bought like so many airsoft guns that were directly from like call of duty 4 just because i love the idea of like like okay you're gonna start off this mission with this m4 and like here's like all the attachments to it and then like later on you'll do another mission it's like oh now you have a different m4 like this one has different like even more different attachments and like just how modular because I, I mean i didn't play call of duty two or three with you guys but in, in this game like there is so many combinations of like the same firearm where like this time you have a grenade launcher this time you don't but you have like you know your suppressor so you can like be quiet and stuff or this time you have uh like tucker mentioned the the, the sniper mission there's like so much variety of firearms that you can use and like not just the weapons themselves but the combinations of like the different weapons which is always more fun yeah, and I think they're also especially memorable to use within these missions because of how much better the characters are. As I said, having a a set of characters that are all very distinct and memorable and have not necessarily character arcs, but moments that you'll remember. Uh, yeah. And of course, Captain Price, I think, obviously, at, at his best here, at least this, thus far in the series, that, that might be true over the overall. I don't want to make any claims yet. Um, but having him throughout with you for basically the entire game when you're playing as Soap McTavish, which is, by the way, a great character name. The reason I think I, I shit a little bit on Paul Jackson is not because uh, the sections aren't good, but that's a boring-ass white guy name. <laughs> Generic and, name. And, and he's not voiced, <laughs> so- and like, 
whatever. But Soap McTavish, great fucking character name. Um, Soap's cool. And, and and having Griggs and Gaz and and these other guys alongside you, Gaz. like, and, and then seeing Griggs and Gaz die in that mm-hmm. final cutscene, it's like, oh wow, they like these are these are characters. This is a story. I'm I'm at least somewhat invested. Like I don't I don't love Griggs or Gaz. I don't have the nostalgia about them, but. There's a story here, and and it's and it's um it's pretty interesting for that. Yeah, I was sad when Griggs died just because you're you're right there at the very very end, and it's like man, if you just survived like four more minutes, like this yeah. would have been all over with. Mm-hmm. He would have still been alive. So I was sad with I was upset when Griggs died, but yeah, you're right. I, I Gaz, I like Gaz's personality, even though there's not that many moments where like personality comes through. Yeah, but like when you have banter between, like you're like you're on to the next objective, and like there's like banter going on. Especially if you have the subtitles on, you can actually like because yeah, it's yeah. hard to understand Scottish accent sometimes. But if you have the subtitles on, like like on the first mission when you're on the ship, right? And he comes up, Gaz comes up to the door. He has the shotgun to like breach the door. He's like, it's like I like to keep this for close encounters. And yeah. Like, ah and then like opens the door and it's like it's not a lot of characterization obviously but it's it's a little more than i think call of duty one at least of course oh i mean it's so much i mean this is this is this is the baseline now it's only gonna get better yeah it does get better from here yeah um so i actually don't have that many other things to talk about but i just want to mention one uh last fun thing is that um one of the names of the missions is uh, no fighting in the war room which is a reference to uh dr strange love or how i learned to stop worrying and love oh. the bomb great great fucking movie great mission name um, the, the mission itself the, is not this, great that's the one with the bomb sequence right we had to put it in the codes i think right? yeah 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 okay yeah. um but the, the one thing i do want to say and i think the basically the only negative i have for this game is that this game is really fucking gray and, and i know that's something that this generation of especially first person shooters is criticized for all the time and it, it's true like enemies get lost in the environments and like things just like why is there not just a slightly sharper shaded green on this tree like Everything is is really gray in, this, in the game, um, which it just leads to less excitement. But also, I get what they're going for. Um, I think the only the only times it has a, it actual impact is when you can't quite see the enemies because they're they're far away or you're sniping. It's like they are just blending in. <laughs> yeah, that was the time. And yeah. was, so everything was brown and gray. Yeah. That's kind of this. This in Resident Evil Four, those two games just muddy brown and gray. Oh, and God. of course, both yes. very good games. Yeah. But some yeah, of the great sneak. That's my biggest gripe about RE4 too. It's yeah, just, it's such a great game. Mm-hmm. Tucker, what you think? Were you like as hyped as probably not hyped as me? It's not the right term, but were you excited too when you're like, you see SAS USMC Joint Operation? And I was like, oh, like my boys are coming together for this one. Yeah, it was yeah. definitely really fun. There, there's a, a small moment in Call of Duty Three where two of your um your storylines cross over and the teams team up. And it's like, oh, okay, oh, that's kind of cool. But uh, there's multiple of those missions here and, and you have the two emblems next to each other and it's like oh okay yeah so these were separate but i can see what they're both leading to and it's a converging storyline that makes them both a little bit stronger of course yeah and then you also get another one of those missions right like from uh, i don't know if two and three has it but one has the same one as the last as four where the highway chase on the back of the truck through the tunnels oh, of yeah there, there's one and just I, like that in one yeah exactly mm-hmm. and i remember i'm like like having played one be like this time i play, obviously i've been playing one this year and then playing four i'm like oh shoot like this is just lifted straight from that whereas before i had never put the two and two together so i thought exactly that was it's just done better at this point yeah um a slight tangent i need to give a shout out to to my baby the m16 okay the best gun in the game the only gun you need to use in multiplayer three round bursts, and that's right. That's it. It's it. M16. It's just the GOAT. It's one of the greatest multiplayer weapons of all time. Just straight up. It's like the Halo 1 pistol, Halo 2 battle rifle, M16 from Call of Duty 4. That's it. That's all you need. There's no need to use anything else. He's right. No. It's just, it's literally, you just aim, pull, dead. You're done. Red dot, dead. Now, we've got one last task for this, and we have two minutes left in our Zoom thing. I think we could probably get this done in time. Uh, Boys, where does this go on our Call of Duty ranking? The, as it stands, it's Call of Duty 2, Call of Duty 1, and Call of Duty 3. Maybe a little bit of a controversial pick there, putting 3 at the bottom. But I go Giacchino. I think that's true. I think that's why you, you pushed for uh, 1 above 3. But uh, any any doubt about this going in first place? <laughs> um... I'm going to say Michael Giacchino, so I think I'm going to put oh, it at 3. Damn it, damn it. Yeah. Well, yeah. <sighs> No, no contest. No. This is this is leagues above all the other three games in, in pretty much every conceivable way. Um, I think maybe you can you could say, oh, you know, two and three had some larger open environments, but 
I prefer, I don't care. Linearity, great, as long as it's giving me some memorable moments, which this game certainly has. So, uh, our new ranking, Call of Duty 4, Call of Duty 2, Call of Duty, and Call of Duty 3. Yeah, I skipped the World War II fest, so I'm just going to defer to you guys on that one. And yeah, call. I mean, it's two. pretty easy. <laughs> yeah, but I, hey, I can't imagine that it did anything worse than the first three. We are returning to the to the World War II fest next month for uh, Call of Duty World at War, the the follow up to Modern Warfare, and we'll see how that game fares in terms of uh, upping the World War II, taking some. I believe it's in the engine of of Modern Warfare. Um, yeah. So it'll be it'll be great to see what what happens there, but. Thank you very much for joining me, guys. Great discussion. Great time talking about this. Loved hearing your memories. And the back cod banter train continues. You know, there's no stopping us. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a little shiny because I was out in the out tending to my plants. So I'm oh. a little shiny, a little sweaty. Yeah, little you're, sweaty. Out, you're out there in it's the trenches. Okay. This is war, baby. This is funny. It's just like just <laughs> crawling in the mud. That's what it takes to tend to baby sunflowers or whatever it is you're going. <laughs>